Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video we're going to work on how you can approximate the instantaneous rate of change of a function at a single point. So the idea is that you have some sort of function, it's going up, it's going down, and you want to figure out how it's changing. And you want to figure out how it's changing at a very specific point, maybe something like that point right there. Now the process for this is fairly simple and it really just involves using your regular old everyday slope formula. So let's see what that process looks like. First of all, we'll use our given point and another point, and we'll compute what we call the average rate of change between those two points. Now, don't worry about the name, it's essentially just figuring out the slope between those two points. Now, after we figure out that slope, we'll record it, and then we'll actually take one of those points and move it closer to our given point. And then we'll just repeat that process over again. So again, we'll figure out the slope uh, between this new point and figure out what that average rate of change is. And like before, we'll write it down um, so that we can compare the two. We'll keep repeating this process, moving points closer and closer to one another, uh, and keep recording their slopes to see if we can determine if they actually approach some other value, what we will call our limiting value. If they do appear to get close to a limiting value, that's what we will use uh, as an approximation to our instantaneous rate of change. Now, don't worry, we will go through an example to see how all of this uh, fits together. So for this one we want to approximate the instantaneous rate of change of our given function and we want to do it at the point 2, negative 8. Now just so we're clear on exactly what we're doing, let's take a look at this function and exactly what we're going to do. So here I have the function and we're really curious about how this function is changing right at this point here. Well, what that really means is I'm curious what is the slope of let's say a, a, a tangent line through that individual point. Now, rather than looking at uh, directly this point, what we will do is we'll choose this point and we'll choose another one and then we'll continually move those points closer and closer together and see what those slopes go to. Alright, so let's get this process started. Since we have to use our slope formula, you really want to consider your given point um, like a given x value and a given y value that you already know about. So what we need is another x and y value pair so that we can begin finding the uh, slope. Let's go ahead and choose another point. Uh, let's see what happens if we use 3. So definitely not the same point. I'm going to plug it into the function. That way we can see what our given y value is for it. Let's see, 3 cubed is 27, uh, 8 times 3 is 24, so this would give us a value of 3. So we can use that as another x value and another y value. Alright, now that we have uh, two x values and two y values, now we could run through the process of finding the slope between these two points. So that's y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And note that the uh, y2 and x2, uh, I'm going to use the values that we were already given. So the negative 8 minus, we'll use our, our new y value over here, our 3. Uh, we have our x2 minus our x1, 3. Perfect. All right. So negative 8 minus 3 would be a negative 11. 2 minus uh, 3 is a negative 1. So this reduces to 11. So when I have this point and I have a point at 3, so I'm choosing those two specific points, the slope between them is 11. Now we want to keep that in the back of our mind and essentially just repeat this process for something even closer. So we did that for the point uh, at x equals 3. Now let's see what happens if we choose something even closer to 2. Let's choose it at 2.5. Like before, you want to imagine putting this into your function so that you can get uh, a y value out of it. Let's see, I did this earlier on our calculator. I got the value of negative 4.375. So again, you want to look at this as like your x and y pair. 
And over here we have yet another x and y pair. We'll call this x1 and y1. So we'll go ahead and figure out what is the slope between these two points. So let's see, negative 8 minus a minus 4.375. And let's see, our x value, 2 minus 2.5. All right, computing those and reducing them, we can now get a brand new slope, 7.25. And you can see that it's a different slope. Of course, we've moved those two points uh, closer together, so it would be a, a different slope. Now, you can see that this is kind of a tedious process, so we're going to move on to the next step. Um, and I'm going to show you what I got for various different other points when we did this process. So the first one uh, that we ended up doing is when our x value was at 3. And this is when we got a slope of 11. And then the one we just did, we had our next point at 2.5. This gave us a slope of 7.25. Uh, some other things that I tried uh, that kept getting closer and closer is I tried 2.2. I tried 2.1, 2.05. Uh, and the last thing I tried is 2.01. And here's what I got for each of those slopes. And what you really want to pay attention is, are these getting close to any specific value? So let's see, when I used 2.2, uh, this gave me 5.24. 2.1 gave me 4.61. 2.05, 4.3025. 4 and 2.01 gave me 4.0601. All right, so I didn't really go beyond that because after doing these various different slopes uh, between those two points, you know, it looked like things were getting closer and closer to the number four. So that's what I would call my limiting value. It looks like things are getting really, really close to four. And I will say that this is our approximation to our instantaneous change. So as you can see, it is quite a process, but uh, let's go ahead and recap uh, how this works. So you use your given point and you choose one other point a little bit farther away and you find the slope between them. Once you find the slope, go ahead and move the points closer together and find the slope again. Every time you find that slope, go ahead and uh, write it down maybe in a table or something so you can record and see how that slope is changing. If you do it enough times and you make those points close enough uh, together, you should get an idea of their instantaneous change between the two points. Now, I got another video on how to do this on the calculator, so if you understand this process, maybe go check that out and see how you can make this go a little bit faster. Uh, but that's how you find the approximate instantaneous change of a function at a single point. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.